Hi everybody, I'm Austin, founder of Circuit Designer. Today I'll show you how to create custom simulatable parts. The parts you create don't just benefit your projects, they shape the platform we're building and they open new possibilities for the entire community. To demo this capability, today we're going to build a soil moisture sensor. So if you turn your attention over to the screen, the first thing we're going to do is create a new circuit file from scratch. And the next thing we need to do is we need to open the component editor. And we're going to do that by clicking Create Custom Component, New Custom Part, and that'll bring up the component editor. So real quick, I'm just going to show you, this is the part that we're building today. This is the SparkFun Soil Moisture Sensor. So I'm going to copy that title over, and I'm going to paste that in for the component name, for the manufacturer, we're going to enter SparkFun, and we're going to copy over the component identifier, SEN13322. Then we'll proceed to the next step, which is to input the component image. As you can see here, we support a couple formats, PNG, SVG, JPEG, and fritzing parts. There's a lot of high quality fritzing parts available online, so today I want to show you how to find and import one of those. So we're going to do just that. We're going to go to Google and we're going to look up SparkFun Soil Moisture Sensor Fritzing Part. And as we scroll down, you'll see the second option there it appears to have a fritzing part included. So we'll click on that. And right at the beginning, I see a fritzing part. So I'm going to click into there and I'm going to download this fritzing part file. Now I'll go back to circuit and I'm going to import that fritzing file I just downloaded. Beautiful. So as you can see it imported the component image and it's high quality. I'm going to click generate component preview in the bottom left to generate a preview within our circuit canvas of the component. And you can see there that the preview is generated. And if we hover over the component pins, you'll see VCC, ground, signal, everything's already defined correctly. So next we're gonna move on to the simulation logic. And to do that, we're going to click enable simulation support which will turn on simulation capabilities for this component. What you now see are the files that make up a component simulation definition. That definition is basically made up of four layers. The first layer is a UI visual layer, and that's essentially what you're looking at and interacting with when the simulation is running. So if the component has any sort of interactivity, like clicking on a button or blinking lights or other animations, that's contained in this UI visual layer. And this layer is made up of two files, the UI HTML file and the UI script TS or TypeScript file. And those two files basically work together to create the visual layer. The second layer is the electrical behavior of the component when the simulation is running. And that's essentially the electrical signals coming into the component as input and leaving the component as output. And that layer is defined within the fourth file from the left, the simulation logic TypeScript file. The third layer is defined in the runtime state JSON file. And that layer essentially defines simulation variables that need to be shared between the UI and the core electrical behavior of the component. So as an example, with this soil moisture sensor, one runtime state variable would be the soil moisture, which would be controlled within the UI as a slider ranging between zero and 100%. That slider would be connected to a runtime state moisture level variable, which the simulation logic layer is able to access. And as that moisture level changes, it's able to vary the electrical signal outputted on the signal pin of the component. And finally, the last layer is defined in the component properties JSON file. 
Component properties are essentially properties of the component that need to persist beyond a single simulation. So as an example, let's say that the component has a hard-coded I2C address. That would be a component property. I do want to point out how a component's visuals work in circuit. When the simulation is not running, a component's visuals are displayed as a static PNG. When the simulation starts, the UI HTML file is overlaid over top of that PNG. So as an example, you could overlay blinking lights or other animations. Or if you decide that the PNG isn't high enough resolution, you could replace the entire PNG with a high fidelity SVG, which is what we're doing with this component, which is why we see the full SVG definition here. So if we zoom in on the component, you'll see that there's a bit of blurring around some of the lettering while the simulation is not running. And as soon as we start the simulation, you'll see that the static PNG was replaced with the SVG, again, defined in our HTML file, and that created a fully crisp image. So now we finally get to start implementing the simulation logic for the component. And since we want circuits built in AI to do most of the heavy lifting, we're going to open up the component AI panel by clicking on the button. So after clicking component AI, you'll see the AI panel opened up on the right. And if I open the dropdown, you'll see that currently there's only one supported model, GPT 4.1. So I'll type in my request for the AI to implement my simulation logic. So I'll say that I'm building a SparkFun soil moisture sensor. Please help me implement the simulation logic. Now, I already did a little bit of research with ChatGPT on how a soil moisture sensor works. So I'm just going to flip over to that screen real quick. So you'll see here the ChatGPT is explaining the relationship between the moisture content of the soil and the output voltage of the sensor on the output pen. And it's essentially saying that the sensor acts as a variable resistance within a voltage divider circuit. And what that means is that the resistance of the sensor is going to vary based on moisture content. For low moisture, it's going to be less conductive and therefore have a higher series resistance. And for higher moisture, it's going to be more conductive and therefore have a lower series resistance. So I'm gonna copy over these equations into the circuit component AI. So I'll paste them in. And we'll kick it off. So if we scroll down, ChatGPT is talking about the plan for its implementation. And then it's going to get started writing code. And what's really cool is you'll see as soon as it's done writing code, you'll actually see that the editor on the left is updated with the code that ChatGPT wrote. So I'm just gonna maximize the simulation code editor. And if you wanna view the changes that ChatGPT made, you can click the view diff button, and that's gonna show the differences to identify the changes that ChatGPT made to the code. So you'll see in the HTML and UI script, no changes in the runtime state, we can actually see the changes here. It created a new runtime state variable for the moisture level. That's going to be a shared variable between the UI and the simulation logic. And that moisture level is going to be displayed to the user as a range or slider input. And then if we move on to the simulation logic, you'll see this is the bulk of the changes that were implemented. So you'll see here that it defined several pins, pin BCC, ground, signal, and looking a little bit below, you'll see that BCC and ground were created as input pins, and the signal pin was created as an analog output pin. That's all correct because the VCC and ground pins are receiving those voltages as inputs to the component, and the signal pin is outputting 
a variable analog voltage. That's why it's an analog output pin. If we skip below for a second to update output, we'll see that it's reading in the VCC voltage as well as the current moisture level. And then we'll see here that it's using those to compute the output voltage to the signal pin. And if we look closely, that equation matches with what we saw from ChatGPT. Now looking just above that, we see that we're subscribing to analog voltage changes on pin VCC and updating the output and subscribing to decimal state changes to the moisture level and again updating the output. That both checks out because the output signal voltage is dependent on both the moisture level and the VCC voltage. So since that all checks out, the next thing I want to do is create a test circuit to verify that the component works. So to do that, I'm going to minimize the component editor and focus mainly on the circuit canvas. I'm going to open up circuit AI to help me build this test circuit. And one thing I want to point out is that there's two different types of AI in circuit. There's a circuit AI and a component AI. Circuit AI is open when you click the circuit AI button and that AI has access to the circuit canvas for helping to design and build a circuit. Component AI is open specifically from within the component editor and it only has access to the component definition. So component AI is useful when you're building a custom component. Circuit AI is useful when you're building a circuit. So I'm gonna ask circuit AI what I need to build a test circuit with the soil moisture sensor. So circuit AI is saying that I need an Arduino Uno and a soil moisture sensor. So I'm gonna add an Arduino Uno to my circuit. Next, I'm gonna check how to wire these up. We see it talks about connections right below. So I need to connect VCC over to five volts on the Arduino. I need to connect ground over to ground. And I wanna connect the signal pin over to A0 on the Arduino. Next, I'm going to ask it what code I need for the Arduino. Here's the code I need. So I'm going to open up the code editor for the Arduino sketch. And I'm going to copy over that code to the editor. I'm going to click verify to compile and make sure the code compiles correctly. Great. At the bottom, this is compilation complete and the green means it succeeded. So we're going to move over to the simulation to test the circuit. So I'm going to start the simulation now. And we immediately see soil moisture level being printed out to the serial monitor. And we're getting a reading of 93. If we click the simulation controls button for the soil moisture sensor, we'll open up a panel where we see we can control the soil moisture. Currently it's represented as a fraction 0 0.5 from zero to one. And as we reduce that, we'll see that the soil moisture level has gone down to 21. And as we increase it, it'll start to increase. And I do want to point out that we see that the rain slider is moving between a moisture level of zero and one, corresponding to zero percent and 100 percent. But the value we're seeing in the serial monitor corresponds to an analog output from the A0 pin. And that value is going to vary between zero and 1023 to indicate the voltage that A0 is receiving. So a value of zero would correspond to zero volts on the A0 pin. A value of 1023 would correspond to five volts on the A0 pin and it scales linearly. Point being that the soil moisture level that we see in the serial monitor 
isn't going to exactly match the soil moisture fraction that we're seeing. All that we want to see is that they move up and down in correspondence with each other. Now, the only thing I'm not happy with is that we're displaying soil moisture as a fraction from zero to one. I'd much rather display it as a percentage from zero to 100%. So we're going to reopen the component editor to make that change. And we'll move into runtime state, which is where the moisture variable is defined. And I'm going to ask the component AI to make the change for me. So I'm just going to remind it that I'm building a spark from soil moisture sensor and that I'd like it to update the runtime state variable to be represented as a percentage from zero to 100 as opposed to a fraction from zero to one. So if we click view diff to show the changes chat GPT made, We'll see that it's now updated the value to be 0 to 100 with an initial value of 50, and the units are now represented in percent. That's exactly what I want. Now, if we click over to the simulation logic, we see that no changes were made. I actually don't think that's correct because we switched from having moisture represented as a fraction from 0 to 1 over to a percentage from 0 to 100. So that should affect scaling in the analog computations. So I'm just going to ask the component AI if it's sure about the changes it made or if it thinks it made a mistake. Yeah, so you can see here it's saying that the simulation logic currently assumes moisture is a fraction from 0 to 1. So it's going to now make the changes that it should have previously made. And if we click through the files, we'll see that it has now changed the simulation logic to represent moisture as a percentage from zero to 100. So I'm just cleaning up some of the code by formatting it and changing the character for percentage on the units. So let's just go back to our test circuit to verify this one more time. And now we see that soil moisture is represented as a percentage from zero to 100, exactly what we wanted. And the behavior in the serial monitor is the same as before. So that's perfect. We finished implementing the simulation logic for this component. And frankly, if it weren't for me talking to you for the last 15 minutes explaining the component editor, the AI probably would have done the work in less than three minutes. So the only thing that's left is for us to clean up some of the code and save the component. So to do that, I'm just gonna click through the files, delete some of the comments, and right-click to format the code. And we'll move on to the last step, which is saving the component. I'll make sure the component's marked public so other users can access it, and I'll save it. And that's it. You've just seen how to build a simulatable part in Circuit Designer. Every part you add makes the simulator more useful for the entire community and pushes the platform forward. Thanks for building with us, and I'll catch you in the next one.